Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of abandoned houses, or IKEA, in Japan. With millions of these homes scattered across the country, it's important to know the do's and don'ts when considering buying one. Let's dive in. So, you've probably heard the buzz about Japan giving away homes for free, right? Well, before you pack your bags and envision your dream home, let's get one thing straight, the reality is a bit more nuanced than that. First things first, many of these abandoned homes aren't fit for habitation or are tied up in legal red tape, making them impossible to buy, sell, or even destroy. So, if you were dreaming of a quick fortune by renting out these homes on Airbnb, think again. It's a no-go, folks. So straight off the bat, making your IKEA livable may require an investment to bring the house up to scratch. Depending on the age and construction method of the house, repairs to the existing structure could run into the millions of yen. But here's the good news, you don't need to be a resident of Japan to buy property there. That's right, there are no restrictions based on nationality. However, owning property won't grant you a visa or residency permit, so keep that in mind if you're eyeing Japan as your new home base. Now, let's talk about the nitty-gritty. If you're serious about snagging a great deal on an IKEA, speaking and reading Japanese will definitely give you a leg up, especially in rural areas where real estate bargains abound. Thinking of financing your IKEA purchase with a mortgage or loan? Hold your horses. To qualify, you'll typically need to be a resident of Japan and meet certain criteria, such as permanent residency, marriage to a Japanese citizen, or a solid work history in the country. The other thing to be aware of with free or very cheap houses are the taxes that you have to pay in addition to the purchase price. When buying any existing house and land in Japan, there are five different taxes to be paid. From most expensive to least expensive, they are registration tax, 2% of estimated value, property acquisition tax, 3% of purchase price, fixed asset tax, 1.4% of purchase price, city planning tax, 0.3% of purchase price, stamp duty, 0 to 20,000 yen depending on purchase price. Now, let's talk location. If you're dreaming of living in the heart of Tokyo, be prepared to shell out some serious yen. The real opportunities lie in areas outside major cities and in rural regions where homes and land can be snagged for next to nothing. Just to give some examples of websites to check out. Ichiba, a platform connecting property owners with potential buyers, offers free homes in remote areas. Furusato Kaiki, for those seeking a rural lifestyle, this organization based in Tokyo helps find homes, jobs, and towns in smaller Japanese communities. Furusatonet, similar to Furusato Kaiki, it lists properties in prefectures near major cities, with a focus on higher quality homes. Keep an eye out for communities like Onomichi and Kamiyama, where initiatives are underway to revitalize rural areas and welcome newcomers with open arms. These towns offer more than just affordable housing, they offer a chance to be part of a vibrant community. And if you're up for a challenge, consider foreclosed properties or partially renovated homes offered by companies like Katitas. While they may require some TLC, they present unique opportunities for savvy investors and DIY enthusiasts alike. Foreclosed properties are sold through a closed bidding process, where sealed offers are opened on a specified date, with the highest bid prevailing. Access to the interior is often restricted, requiring potential buyers to peer through windows. The National Tax Agency's website lists properties seized for unpaid taxes. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insider tips and insights. I'll drop the links to websites in this video in the description. Until next time, happy house hunting!